they would literally put him like Bin Laden was still alive. It would be Bin Laden, <laughs> Caillou, Bin Laden again, and Caillou. Yeah. And whose team is this? Is this your team, or is this your daddy's team? Thanks for listening to Dad Mode Podcast. Common sense parenting in a politically correct world. Here's your host, Andy Carlson. Welcome back to the Dad Mode Podcast, Common Sense Parenting in a Politically Correct World. I'm your host, Andy Carlson, at Andy Carlson Show on the Twitter machine. I'm a father, and uh, I have no idea what I'm doing, but uh, you don't either. They're cheapy, so let's try and learn something together today. Website is dadmodepod.com, Twitter at dadmodepod, or just use the hashtag uh, dadmode, and we'll get all up in that. Uh, joining me today is not Uncle Nick, but we got another Nick. Uh, Nick Hauser uh, rejoins the show again. Nick, how's it going? Good, good. Thanks for having me again. Uh, at Nick underscore Hauser, uh, take me to the pilot podcast. Visit all his stuff at hardlyserious.com. Also, a Niners fan? No, Broncos fan. Oh. I'm just in Niners territory. I think we covered that. I uh, think. Goodness, because uh, that that was unfortunate. Yeah, that was that was pretty awful on both sides, though. Yeah, and again, uh, well, we're talking Vikings 49ers Monday night game or Tuesday morning game, whichever time zone you live in. But uh, yeah, it just ugliness all the way around. Uh, let's talk about some happier stuff or uh, some happier things that came out of a, a relatively uh, was it annoying, no, not really annoying. Um, I can't even think of the word, but kids flying on an airplane. So, uh, yep, you're a parent, I'm a parent, and you recently had your, was it the first experience uh, flying with your son? Yeah, it was the first time. All right, and you did a lot of research going in because, uh, you know, thinking back to when you didn't have kids and you know, you're you're loading up on the plane and yeah, you, know, you got your seat and ready to go, like you're flying to Vegas or something, you were like so excited, and then all of a sudden, like three screaming kids come on board and you're like, Son of a bitch! <laughs> this is gonna be terrible. Exactly. Yeah. All right, but what are uh, what were your experience and what are some things that you uh, learned along the way? Um, so, first of all, I kind of set myself up for failure. Uh, I had it kind of ingrained in my head that this flight was the perfect flight to start out on because it was only like fifty five minutes, and you know, God forbid, he did cry the whole time. It's a short flight. People will have to get over it. Uh, turns out I was way off and the flight was an hour and 40 minutes. So that was already just, I started kind of backwards there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was, I was really afraid today. It seems like, you know, one kid cries and I read all these stories about these, these parents getting kicked off of planes because their kids cried. So I was just so nervous that I did a ton of research on what to do you know, just in case this kind of thing happens. Um, most of it's pretty common sense. It's everything you'd expect. It's like, Mm -hmm. you know, load up a backpack they can take on so that they have something, uh, that's theirs, uh, loaded up with snacks and and then you put the bomb in their bag. (laughs) You know, what's funny about that. I guess it's not really funny is they really didn't check him at all. He didn't have to take his shoes or his jacket off. He didn't have to open his backpack. How do they know the kid doesn't have two shoe bombs? Exactly. I, you know, it was, and then they even let me through with him instead of going through that weird thingy you have to raise your arms over mm-hmm. your head. They just let us through like a side door. Well, see, you are though very like Snow White. You're like very, oh, yeah, yeah. you're like very Caucasian. Uh, but every time, Certainly. every time I've flown, uh, I always get a little bit of the eyebrow raise. I don't get like the nth degree, like uh, like I'm like Sheikh Mohammed is my name or something, but <laughs> you see the Asian guy with the very um, Caucasian name of Andy Carlson, you're going to get the, uh, maybe a little extra scrutiny. I, I, I don't know what it is, but it just always seems to happen. Dirty. Yeah, see, I, I went through with my uh, my windbreakers and my UC Davis baseball t-shirt on and my backwards baseball hat. Totally fine. Yep. All right, then what happened? Uh, so yeah, so basically the uh, the security was easy. Uh, the plane wise, it's it's pretty much common sense. Uh, lots of snacks, water, a binky, lots of stuff to do to distract him. We loaded up all kinds of. I did. I like I said, I did a bunch of research. I I literally Googled 
uh, best apps for best free apps for toddlers and mm-hmm. downloaded like twelve of them, hoping even one would stick. See, I, I imagine like a lot of the toddler apps are like the same apps as you would download for someone who's really high. <laughs> so just lots of <laughs> colors and lots of like flickering lights and stuff and yeah. Oh yeah, lots of singing. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, they're all pretty terrible. Mm. Um, and I didn't even think any of them were really for toddlers, but. A lot, a lot of them are like, you have to push the buttons to open up the color tab to choose your color to then scribble all over the screen as if you're actually coloring. He just he didn't get it. So oh. they're they're pretty dumb. But uh, yeah, some of the stuff though was was pretty uh, pretty crazy. Like the I think the most memorable one was goodie bags. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of sites suggested bringing goodie bags. Oh, to for, ha- to hand out to people around you. To hand out to up to fifty, they said twenty-five to fifty goodie yeah. bags, and and most of them are like throw a couple pieces of candy in there and a note that says like, "Hey, this is my first flight. I'm sorry in advance." Um, but some of them got just super intense. Like one suggested bringing um, or loading up the goodie bags with earbuds for everybody. Mm. Yep, um, and like typed out four paragraph poems about your kid like hi my I, name is brady and like rhyming out see that's gonna make me hate brady more than if i didn't get the goodie bag because i don't care Be- besides everyone has a- an ipod or listen to music on their iphone or laptop anyways and exactly and you see the pictures of this um you know because you know, it is kind of cutesy wootsy except I-, I feel like if like that happened in real life i would be uh, I would just think the parents are like giant douchebag blowhards. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sorry, but I'm not spending my money on a flight and an extra seat for my kid and whatever luggage we have to pay for and then extra set of money for 25 to 50 sets of earbuds for people yeah. just in case my kid cries. And see, that's uh, – well, you take the candy and you take the Starburst and then you shove like a half of a Tylenol PM. In each one, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. You can't do the whole visit the bar pre-boarding thing. Well, you can for yourself. Yeah. Now, uh, have you ever been on a flight where there was a, a flying kid previously, or a crying kid previously? Uh, like, have I ever experienced it myself? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. It's like every flight. Mm. Uh, most of the time, you know, it's funny because I, before I had a kid. Um, crying kids were the worst and since i've had a kid um you can kind of almost feel for the parent um depending on the cry Mm -hmm. so if they're if if, i've had a couple of crying kids on planes experiences since i've had a kid um totally easy to ignore Mm -hmm. it's kind of weird how that changes now i i feel like the you know the high publicized like the celebrity and her kids get kicked off the plane and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's all overblown and especially with social media nowadays the celebrities plays the victim card like so hard. Yeah. Because uh, what was it? Uh, I think it was some Canadian singer had like two kids and a nanny mm-hmm. and they got kicked off the plane because uh, like the kid was freaking out and then she was like I've never in my life experienced such terribleness. <laughs> but it's just like nah, eh, you, you got a nanny. I mean the nanny was flying coach, I'm pretty sure. So why, why can't you uh, dish out a couple more shekels, have the, the nanny up in first class? Hmm? Yeah, I don't know. And that's the exact article that I read last that kind of scared me into doing all this research in the first place. So I don't know. You really never know. Uh, I feel like with that particular story, she she claimed that her kid didn't even do anything. Like her kid wasn't even crying. It was just like walking around the aisle before the plane even started moving mm. and that's when they kicked her off well don't let your kid walk down the aisle yeah exactly we go time we, uh, we actually learned a really good trick um somebody told us beforehand because on the way there we didn't have a seat purchased for him um and i guess it depends on the airline but somebody told us just sit in all three seats mm-hmm. and make them ask you if your kid is ticketed mm-hmm and then if your kid is not ticketed, uh, they'll usually try to do their best to accommodate if the plane is not full. And so we did exactly that. We sat all the way in the back of the plane, 
three across. Um, and it was like, there was seven people left standing. And then they finally came and asked and they were like, Hey, is he ticketed? And we're like, no. And they're like, okay, we'll see what we can do. And they ended up having like three empty seats. So they let him have a seat. Mm. Now, uh, hold your son again. Uh, he's just about to be two. Okay. Now, what's the procedure? Like if the kid doesn't have a seat, like does he just sit on laps? during takeoff yeah so so on the way back we didn't get so lucky and he had to sit on our lap but yeah. uh but then we ended up getting doubly lucky because he fell asleep the entire way so if there's one thing that i did learn about flying or road trips at all mm-hmm. it's schedule them around naps now the you know the fha or f f f f a no f a whatever the airplane uh aviation thing is they're so concerned about mm-hmm. safety and everything is buckled in and then uh, especially kids and car seats now that's got like 17 point straps and it, you need like a, an engineering minor to be able to install some of these seats but you know on a plane just uh like uh well um sit in lap we'll be good yeah sure. it's free reign i actually buckled him i put him on my lap and then buckled both mm-hmm. of us in and got kind of yelled at a little bit for it they told me definitely do not do that buckle myself in have him sit on my lap just pretty much free. Wait, so if we hit some turbulence and then we hit a huge bump, we just tell the kid to go limp. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just go limp. Try and land on on in the uh, on E eight or E five. I can't, I can't be fine. responsible if my kid flies three rows forward. Yeah, that, that's really surprising. Like how stringent like everything to do with flying is nowadays. That they'll just let a kid just sit on laps. Uh, w- yeah. What's the age cutoff where they have to buy their own seat? Uh, it's two. Oh, is it two? Yeah, so we just made it. Oh, nice. This this is what I'm saying. Like we were so nervous about this first flight that we stalled so mm-hmm. that he would be as old as he could possibly be on his first flight, but still be free. Mm-hmm. Now, how would would you change anything if, if it was like a like a five six hour flight? Um, now that I've done the first flight, you definitely need more stuff. Like we, I did the ten apps on my phone, and we had a coloring book and like a bag of snacks i mean it was a pretty big bag of snacks Mm -hmm. um but in the flight there like i said hour and 40 minutes about the last 30 minutes he was bored of all of his stuff Mm -hmm. and that's when he really wanted to i I called him grabby hands because he was like oh let me put this seat tray down let me put this seat tray down let me turn the air on let me flip the window up and down and up and down let me get down and walk and and I had to try to like restrain him for a minute, and then he started kicking the seat in front, and I was like, "Oh no, now you're that kid." So, mm-hmm. so I didn't quite bring enough stuff. Uh, we tried to load a movie onto our phones and failed miserably. So I would say for like a five six hour flight, you're definitely gonna want like two movies, three uh, movies, the, maybe. The, the kid can't follow a plot. And just uh, just load up a random YouTube video. I mean, yeah. If if you if you have Wi-Fi or something on your phone, then then definitely movies are probably the best route. Yeah, and uh, what is it? Um, now, it, at two years old, that's starting to get into the terrible twos. Is that applicable? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that that was the whole, like, I'm bored, so I'm going to do stuff just to piss you off kind of thing. Like, I know you don't want me to put the seat tray down, so I'm going to do it. Yeah, now, did you get any dirty looks from the people around you? Uh, no, only because, (laughs) so shout out to the Chico State women's soccer team. Mm -hmm. They actually were going up to Seattle with us and they also tried to get the back. So we were surrounded by like half of their team. Hey, how you doing? And and we're talking like 18, 19, 20, 21 year old girls. Mm -hmm. So he was like in love. So that, that last 20 minutes he started getting bored. We were like, you know what? We're just going to experiment, like kind of let him do his thing. Mm -hmm. So we sat him down we're like all right you do you buddy and he's just like making eyes at these girls and they're eating it up and both sides just hamming it up so we're like "Mm, all right now the chico state women's soccer team is gonna have to cancel their season because half their team is gonna get pregnant now because your kid just gave (laughs) him baby fever i mean possibly it is definitely possible and that's one of the tips that i found during the research is dress your kid up cute because it's harder harder to be mad at a cute baby yeah, that that is pretty true. <laughs> now, is there? Uh, I I wonder if there's any parents out there. Uh, I'd be kind of tempted to to you know slip them a little, you know, a little children's Tylenol, a little uh, a little something to take the edge off. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't be the only one. I I think I want to say that I read that. Yeah. 
Um, I definitely had a couple of people uh, suggest that to me. Except, see, nowadays media. you're not supposed to admit that because then, like, the social media mafia or, like, the moms united will come after you. It's like, how dare you poison yeah, exactly. your child with unnecessary medication? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, no, definitely don't do that. Wink, wink. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, hmm. what, what's it going to be like when, if and when you guys have another kid? Like, could you imagine? Because, you know, uh, most uh, economy seats, most coach seats are three wide. I, I don't know about traveling with two adults, two kids. Yeah, I, I honestly, I have to, like, applaud parents who do it. I don't know how. Like, as soon as you asked that question, I started imagining it, and I started kind of cringing up a little bit because it just sounds horrible. Mm. Uh, I've been on a plane where mom, dad, two kids, uh, both kids older than two, so they had to have their own seats, full flight, so they had to get separated. Mm-hmm. And uh give you one guess which of the parents, mom or dad, was super pissed off about that. <laughs> Dad didn't care. Yeah. He was like, whatever. I'm going to put my headphones on and go to sleep. Mm. Four-year-old's going to do his thing. But mom is pretty upset. So uh, I don't know. I I mean, that's the only thing I can think of is you'd have to separate and just kind of one-on-one your kids. Now, would you ever take the bullet uh, for the kid, whereas if he was uh, acting up and you couldn't calm him down, then you'd just get really drunk and just distract distract the entire plane? Instead of... uh, the plane focusing on the crying kid. Now they're focusing on the drunk, blood drunk guy. Ah, you know what? I've never thought of that. <laughs> that actually might be a good route. Now, that could be a good enough, way. Out. You could you could distract the whole plane in a positive way. Yeah, or you could just completely burn it down, and it'll be like that drunken buffoon is making that kid cry. How dare he? Right, exactly. But there's a fine line because nowadays you get kicked off for that too, probably. Oh, well, you know, you're, you're in midair and you get on the no fly list, and you know, Greyhound. Travels to like every city now, so you'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. Halfway to Seattle, you have to stop at like Portland. Yep. Now, as far as like packing, like for the kid, like how much, like what percentage of your gear was his? Uh, so we took a big bag, like a big suitcase, and shared it between uh, my wife and I, and then we took our medium-sized suitcase, and we packed it about, I would say probably half full with his stuff and we left room because we were going up to see my mom who hasn't seen him in a year and a half so you know he's going to come home with a bunch of junk he doesn't need Mm -hmm. um and then we were actually staying with uh my great uncle and aunt who are in their 80s who have never met him so you know he's going to get triple the amount he would normally so we we kind of knew he was going to come home with more stuff than we left with Mm -hmm. um and we definitely did we almost didn't have enough room yeah and See, that's what I was bugging me too because uh, I can see it from the grandparents or relatives or friends' perspectives that you want to get the kid, oh, the, the really awesome toy that mm-hmm. will just make their eyes light up except they don't know that the kid's got like 17 of them back at home. Yeah, exactly. My mom beforehand was like, she took a picture of three toys, said, which one does he want for his birthday? And I said, ah, he'll play with the one on the right. And we showed up and she had bought them all three. I don't know. Uh, you know, the kid probably like a nice little Target gift card so he can buy diapers. <laughs> that would have been nice. Yeah, literally burning money on something that he's gonna fill with crap. Yeah, yeah, and it's a dump truck, so he could literally fill it with crap. Oh yeah. Uh, how was the bathroom situation? Did he make it the entire flight without um, ejecting? Oh yeah, he made it. Ah, That's lucky. what I'm saying. Like we got really lucky with both of these flights. Like. Mm. The, the, the way there, he was pretty much contained until the end, and then he started flirting with these girls. Totally yeah. fine. Uh, the way back, he usually sleeps. He takes a nap for like 45 minutes, maybe an hour if we're lucky. He slept the entire hour and 40, way, 40 minutes on the way back. Now, uh, I haven't flown since uh, I've become a dad. There's things that you never like notice until like their priorities. So do the, the bathrooms and airplanes, do they have changing tables, like the fold-down things? You know what? I didn't even notice either. Uh, the only thing that I did think of, I didn't actually go look for it, but when I did go to the bathroom mid-flight, I was like, man, this thing is way smaller than I remember it ever being. Mm-hmm. And it kind of half-crossed my mind, like, it'd be really hard to change them in here. 
and then I went back to my seat. I didn't actually really look for it. Yeah. Now, if he had really started like going off like full tantrum style, who would have been the uh, enforcer, uh, as it were? You were the wife. Um, man, we switch off. It, it kind of depends where we are. We have this habit of like one of us will start and then we'll get really frustrated if it's not working and just go like mute mode and pissed off and then the other one will kind of know to jump in mm. um i would guess if he went full tantrum i would guess it'd probably be me first until i got fed up and then she would jump in i got you all right so what else has been going on uh with the life of the kid uh, since we last talked uh he's talking a ton um he used to say i think last time i talked to you he was like he'd repeat maybe 20 words but two of them would be crystal clear and 18 of them would be mumbles that you know he's trying to say the word that you said Mm -hmm. but it's not successful at all and now he will literally repeat every single word you say back to you Uh, now has that backfired on you yet uh, it, I had a near backfire one time, um, somebody ran a red light and almost clipped us mm-hmm. and, uh, <laughs> I called him a stupid SOB mm-hmm. and the path that he repeated was stupid. So <laughs> nice. my eyes got real big and thought, oof, dodged, dodged getting clipped and then dodged that bullet at home. That, that's still so, relatively tame as far as uh, road rage goes though. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, it kind of I I have really bad road rage. Uh, California driver, shocking. Mm. And uh, he's actually calmed me down a lot. Well, how can uh, you have road rage going ten miles an hour? <laughs> Touche. Well, because when you're going ten miles an hour, because there's a stoplight every twenty five feet, people just start running stoplights. Mm. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've been pretty lucky. I've dodging bullets there. Um, Mostly because I'm cognizant of him being in the car, but also a little bit because when I do have a little bit of a rage moment, uh, my wife will call me on it mm-hmm. and get really mad. Um, so now it's like the thinking is I don't want to rage out and say something bad, not only because he might repeat it, but because she's going to slap me as soon as he's gone. So I don't want to get slapped. Now, what kind of TV is he into? Uh, we're, we're still on the Disney channel and the Nickelodeon channel. Right. Please don't say Caillou. No, no Caillou. Right, Watched that. that like one time. I was like, we're never watching this again. Uh, I, I don't know how that stays on the air because every parent I've talked to like hates Caillou with a passion. Like they would literally put him like Bin Laden was still alive. It would be Bin Laden, <laughs> Caillou, Bin Laden again and Caillou. Yeah. He's, ah, oh, Caillou is awful. Uh, he's actually, Brady's into Paw Patrol, which if you've ever seen that, it's actually pretty cute. I've caught myself watching it by myself. No joke. I, I don't know what that is. What is it? Uh, so Paw Patrol. It's, uh, so I'm going to like give you this whole breakdown here. It's basically this kid writer, and he's got these five dogs, and they're all different kinds of dogs, and they all do different kinds of jobs. So he's got, like, the Dalmatian as the firefighter, and the German Shepherd as the cop. Mm. Uh, He's got, like, a bulldog that's a construction dog. Uh, He's got this recycling dog and this other, I don't know if she's, like, a chihuahua or something. She flies a plane. And they're, like, a rescue crew. So anytime anybody around town needs rescuing, his Paw Patrol, like, jumps into action and saves the day. It's really cute. So, <laughs> I can so, feel your silence like, huh, okay. So it's like Breaking Bad. I mean, yeah, pretty much, without all the uh, shooting and and drugs. All right, speaking of TV, what's uh, new with Take Me to the Pilot? Uh, Take Me to the Pilot is, is going well. We're in our, I think we've recorded eight or nine, so it's still pretty fresh. Um but definitely growing. Um, so basically we just either we think of ideas for the pilot episode of television shows to watch, or we get user suggestions. Uh, we go and watch the, the pilot episode of that show. And then we just, there's four of us, we critique it. Um, 
everything from music, acting, the written lines, the pacing. Uh, we look for tropes, um, things that kind of occur in, in every single show, no matter you know what decade it's in or what style of show it is. Um, so it's been fun. We've watched uh, a lot of older shows, like um, Small Wonder is one that comes to mind. It's really, truly awful. It's probably the worst television show I've ever watched. Have you guys done Quantum Leap yet? Uh, we didn't do Quantum Leap, but that ah. was discussed a lot during... Uh, we watched Sliders. I don't know if mm. you remember that. Jerry yep. O'Connell. Mm-hmm. Uh, it reminded a couple of other people of Quantum Leap. No, see, they should reboot Quantum Leap because he never made it home. So it would be easy to pick up again. He didn't. You're right. They Scott Bakula needs work. NCIS, <laughs> New Orleans, or wherever city there is, ain't going to be around forever. No, no. There you go. Uh, all right. All right, so uh, back to the topic to close us out. What's the one piece of advice for uh, first-time parents bringing a little kid, whether it be six months, a year, two years, whatever, on a plane? What's one uh, solid piece of advice from your experience? Uh, I think the top piece of advice is scheduled around a nap if you can. Uh, the longer they sleep on the plane, the better. And other they... than that, it's just honestly, it's bring. If they are awake, then it's bring as much stuff as you can pack without going overboard. So to keep t- them entertained. Take the kid on the red eye after keeping him up all night. Gotcha. Yep. There you go. <laughs> that all could right. either work really well or backfire tremendously. All right, he's Nick Hauser. Follow him on Twitter at Nick underscore Hauser. Uh, thanks so much. Part two. All right, thank you. And you can thank us by going around telling a friend about the Dad Mode podcast. Yeah, we're here. What was it, episode 42? We're, we're climbing the charts, baby. We are rolling up some listeners, and we're getting it done. So just tell a friend. Tell your spouse. Tell your kids. Tell your uh, lovers and friends. Tell me again. We'll be lovers and friends. Also, Amazon, dadmopod.com, top left corner. Click through our Amazon banner. It'll take you there. Bookmark it and buy everything you're going to buy for your kid. All the toys, all the books, all the clothes, all the gripe water, all the other airplane crap and blah, blah, blah. Buy it on Amazon through our link and we'll get a little taste. We'll keep the lights on, on dad mode, and keep this train moving forward. Yeah, love it. Uh, the show's available on iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at DadModePod or me at Andy Carlson Show. Website is DadModePod.com. Uh, but till next time, see you Friday. Be a man, be a father, go Dad Mode. We'll see you next time. Think the episode you just heard is worth a dollar? Well, send it our way. Visit DadModePod.com slash support to find out how. Be a man, be a father. Go Dad Mode. The music is created and produced by Deeb. To hear more of his tracks, visit soundcloud.com slash Deeb.